BP, PV of posterior semicircular canal. The five types we all know are very well defined. The posterior long ampullary arm semicircular canalolithiasis. Second is posterior non ampullary arm semicircular canalolithiasis, one with downbeat nystagmus during the Dix Hall Pike testing and also during the enhanced head hanging position. Third is posterior semicircular cupulolithiasis or the gravis septive heavy cupula. Fourth is short arm posterior semicircular canalolithiasis. Fifth is periampullary canal site posterior semicircular canalolithiasis, which is often associated with a constriction in the periampullary region of the posterior semicircular canal. These are shown in this slide. The outline of my talk is inversion test, which is positive in posterior cupulolithiasis, negative in short arm posterior canalolithiasis, and a few slides about the apogeotropic variant of the posterior semicircular canal BPP. The posterior cupulolithiasis or the gravis septive heavy cupula shown in red here is best evaluated by the half alpike positioning which often elicits a upbeating ipsitorsal nystagmus. The Dix alpike testing in which the head from upright sitting is positioned to around 120 degrees is not optimal for evaluating the cupulolithiasis because of the variations in the angle of the cupula. It may be a neutral cupula, it may be a canal angulated cupula or it may be a vestibulum angulated cupula. So to make it more orthogonal and graviceptive, the half alpike positioning is made where from the upright sitting the head is carried to just 60 degrees in the lying down supine position and if a pillow of around 4 to 5 inch thickness is placed at the head end of the examination table the head would land here and there is no need to support as shown in this slide inversion test in posterior cupulolithiasis this is the right half alpike position shown by this diagram and as the nose down to the left is done, a positive inversion test means when the right torsional upbeating disturbance in the right half alpike position becomes left torsional and downbeating in nose down to the left. This is suggestive of adherent type of cupulolithiasis. In fact, a acid test for this type of cupulolithiasis as per the Professor John Apley. A negative inversion test means when the right torsional upbeating disturbance in right half alpike position disappears on nose down to the left. This is suggestive of non adherent type of cupulolithiasis, which is in inverted commas because this is in fact a dynamic heavy cupula caused by the particles of otoconia falling on the cupula in the short arm semicircular canalolithiasis, which we will be discussing in one of the cases. So, this is a 63 year old male patient who had come with history of vertigo of positional type for past 15 days on right half alpike position after a latency of 30 seconds he elicits a prolonged duration upbeating right torsional nystagmus to show that it is long lasting i have scrolled this video to 1 minute to show that the nystagmus is still present at 1 minute and 54 seconds it is still present Left lateral recumbent position with nose down is being carried out. This is called the inversion test and the oculomotor patterns, they reverse polarity. The upbeating right torsional nystagmus during the half alpike position has become downbeating and left torsional. The left torsional component is more prominently seen in the right eye of the patient. And this is a positive inversion test, a acid test of adherent type of cupulolithiasis. Human experience with canalith repositioning maneuver. This is a landmark paper by Professor John Apley written in year 2001. He said that identification of nystagmus reversal with head inversion confirms cupulolithiasis. If persistent nystagmus maximizes in one provocative position but does not occur in the inverse position, it suggests that cupulolithiasis may be present due to non-adherent particles falling away from the cupula in one of these positions.
but in that case the diagnosis is less certain the clouds of uncertainty remain in the sky for another 20 years when scoco published sitting of vertigo as an expression of posterior semicircular heavy cupola and posterior short arm semicircular cannelolithiasis in year 2022 so the short arm posterior semicircular cannelolithiasis periampullary cannelolithiasis which is often associated with a constriction around the periampullary region of the posterior semicircular canal and the graviceptive heavy cupola these three conditions are shown in red here they often coexist together in one or more permutations and combinations so this is a lady 32 year old came with 7 days history of positional vertigo the dix halpike test on the right elicits a upbeating right torsional nystagmus of less than 1 minute duration so simultaneously a therapeutic apply maneuver was undertaken the right dix halpike position was maintained for 1 minute after which the head was inclining inclined to the left side uh, by 90 degree and this second position was maintained for around 1 minute after which left lateral recumbent position with nose down was done and this position was also maintained for 1 minute after which the patient was uprighted completing one apply maneuver a day later the patient returns with the residual dizziness mainly on getting up from the supine position the dix halpike test to the right did not elicit any nystagmus and vertigo even after one minute so the patient's oculomotor patterns were examined on getting up from the right dix halpike position they elicited upbeating right torsional nystagmus this nystagmus is similar which we get in right posterior semicircular canal bppp during the dix halpike testing but this is coming on getting up from the right dix halpike position so how is this the patient was subjected to the right half half halpike position which after a latency of around 10 seconds elicited a prolonged duration right torsional upbeating nystagmus to show that it is prolonged duration i have scrolled this to around 1 minute when it is still present at 1 minute and 45 seconds it is still present and the nose down to the left with left little repositioning was done the nystagmus disappears so this is a negative inversion test the inversion position was maintained for 1 minute but no nystagmus reappeared so this is a type of cupulolithesis which is non adherent type which falls away during the inversion away from the posterior cupula so this is the right dixalpike position the otoconal debris is shown in the short arm of the posterior semicircular canal as the patient is positioned from right dixalpike to the upright sitting position or is positioned to the half alpike position from the upright sitting the otoconia fall on the articular side of the posterior cupola making it heavy this is a dynamic heavy cupola which generates a upbeating ipsi torsional nystagmus on getting up from the dixalpike position and here the inversion test is negative as we had seen in the previous video the other condition could be the particles are so light that they keep on floating in the short arm of the posterior semicircular canal causing a chronic small deflection these episodes are called type 2 bppv short episodes of vertigo with retropulsion and there is documentation of anterior posterior trunkal oscillations on ad hoc posturography in sitting position the third is the graviceptive heavy cupola of adherent type where the inversion test is positive. This is the model of periampular posterior semicircular cannelolithesis with ampulofugal restriction during the dix halpike testing shown in this animation. During the dix halpike testing, there is no movement of the otoconal debris because of the otolithic jam. And getting up from the sitting dix halpike position, there is first a negative inertia. This causes ampulopetal movement of the debris and secondly by the gravitational force there is a ampulofugal movement of the debris and cupular deflection 
and this is causing the second phase is causing the FC torsional upbeating nystagmus on getting up from the dexal pipe position. So why inversion test is negative during the half alpike maneuver in the short posterior arm semicircular canalulysis is the sitting position. As the patient is taken to the half alpike position to the right, there is ampullofugal excitatory generation stimulation of the cupola and this causes a prolonged duration FC torsional right torsional upbeating nystagmus. As the nose down to the left is done, that is the inversion test, the autogonia fall away and there is no cupola deflection and there is no nystagmus. This is a 35 year old male with history of positional vertigo for past 3 to 4 days on left dick salpike position it elicits a down beating left torsional nystagmus. The patient was subjected to multiple demi support maneuver, a few quick liberatory maneuver of the calipeno and the patient was sent home to lay in the left lateral recumbent position with nose down that is the fourth prolonged position of Venuki 2015. Next day he returns. He was subjected to the enhanced head hanging position which elicits a up beating right torsional nystagmus. So this is an intracanalar conversion to the typical posterior semicircular canal BPPV, a definite grade by Califino. There is a catch here, the excitatory projections of the left anterior semicircular canal because of ampullofugal cupular deflection and the inhibitory projections of the right posterior semicircular canal because of the ampullopetal cupular deflection are to the same group of muscles that is the right inferior oblique and left superior rectus. The yoke pair of muscles as per the Sherrington's and Herring's law generating a slow phase VOR which is right torsional and up beating. The positional nystagmus which is a fast phase VOR and a reflexive saccade is therefore left torsional and down beating whether it is right apogeotropic posterior semicircular canal BPPV or left anterior semicircular canal BPPV. Because the apogeotropic posterior semicircular canal BPPV is 6.5 times more common compared to anterior semicircular canal BPPV as per the data of Califano, I therefore treat peripheral positional downbeat nystagmus as apogeotropic posterior semicircular canal BPPV more often than anterior semicircular canal BPPV. Finally, summing up, the six variants are the typical long ampullary arm canalolithiasis treatable by Apple or Simon Penwell, good response. The apogeotropic variant treatable by Demi Simon or forced prolonged positioning or quick laboratory maneuver. The short arm canalolithiasis treatable by Brent of exercises. Periampullary canal site posterior semicircular canalolithiasis with a constriction in the periampullary region of the posterior semicircular canal, treatable by Brent of exercises. Posterior heavy cupola, no definitive treatment known, mostly it recovers in a period of one month. Brent of exercises and mastoid exhalations may be tried. Posterior light cupola, the cause is a acute alcoholic intake, no treatment, it is better to prevent it. Thank you very much.